Shalom, shalom, Israel. Shalom, shalom to the 12 tribes with the scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Maureen Aliyahu Ben Yashraal, and I have with me Officer Abad Yahu Ben Yashraal, and we will be coming to you once again with another Torah foundational lesson. And we would also like to extend a shalom and a hearty welcome to the strangers that latch hope to the 12 tribes of Israel to make up the commonwealth. So shalom, shalom to you guys. Shalom, shalom. And at this time, we are going to go immediately into our prayer. We're going to have our officer, Bar Yahu, open us up with prayer. And soon after that, we will go directly into the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba Father, thank you once again for allowing us to come together. Father Yah, before of anything, we just give you esteem. We just want to give you all praise. We want to thank you for everything you're doing. Um, thank you for all the provisions. Thank you for your kindness, your goodness, and your mercy, Father. Father Yah, we thank you for the ultimate love gift in Hamashiach Yahusha. And Father Yah, we just ask for the set apart Ruach to fall upon Moriah Eliyahu. And we pray that none of these words are falling on deaf ears and your, and your children are being edified and, um, and filled with the word. Father Yah, we ask these things and say these things through. Hamashiach Yahusha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, everybody. So we're going to get directly into our teaching. It's a continuation from the previous teaching or lesson, which was um, lesson four, part C. This is lesson four, part D. We've done the uh, other previous lessons, lesson four, part A, lesson four, part B. We did lesson four, part C. And as I um, said a second ago, that this is lesson four, part D. And we have been discussing the split of the 12 tribes of Israel in um, the previous two lessons or teachings. We went into that to show how the split came about because our study is and our topic is the Gentiles. What is a Gentile? Who are the Gentiles? Is it possible that if the children of Israel don't meet in certain uh, don't meet certain standards, could it be possible that they could be called Gentiles or become Gentiles? And so, what we're doing, we're examining the Scripture, and we prove all three that the sons of Noah, and more specifically, Japheth or Japheth. And his descendants, they were given the Isles of the Gentiles. They became what we know today as the European nations. And we also focus and show that of the other sons of Noah, uh, Ham and Shem, that he did not refer to them at any time as Gentiles. And what we're trying to do is show that through history, we're going to see something that takes place after the split of the 12 tribes into two nations, you're going to see that one by the name of the house of Israel, Ephraim, also known as the Northern Kingdom, they receive a bill of divorce. They're no longer the most high people and they get scattered or sown amongst the Gentile nations and they become Gentiles. They become Gentiles. So, Without any further ado, we're going to continue. And we are going to go to the book of Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. And we're going to continue to read about these two houses. And we show that when we read the book of Jeremiah, how the northern kingdom, the house of Israel, was written a bill of divorce. They were put away and given a bill of divorce. But the Most High didn't do that with the house of Judah, even though Judah became more treacherous and had observed and saw what he did to the house of Israel. They still went and played the harlot as well. And so we read about that in uh, Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, I mean in Jeremiah, and we also 
went to Kings to show some um, how weak both houses became. So let's go to Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter, and see if Ezekiel lines up with Jeremiah. And what I like about Ezekiel and Jeremiah, they both prophesy to both houses while they are in captivity. So we're dealing with the Babylonian captivity here. Remember, Jeremiah uh, prophesied to both houses 30 years prior to Ezekiel going back to the same hard-headed, stiff-necked, wicked, idolatrous, rebellious people. So let's look at another allegory of how the Most High uses his language when talking to um, the two houses, uh, um, the two houses, and let me go there first to uh, about you. Let me get it first. Your kids of Kael or Ezekiel, the twenty third chapter, beginning at verse one. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ezekiel, kids of Kael, twenty three and one. The word of the Lord came again uh, unto me, saying, Son of man. There were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredom in Egypt. They committed whoredom in their youth. There, uh, there were their breasts pressed, and there they were bruised in, in teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Aloha the elder and Alohaba her sister, and they and they were mine and they bear sons and daughters thus were their name samaria and is aloha in jerusalem is aloha ba so samaria or northern kingdom is ahola and jerusalem which is no southern kingdom the Jew, house of judah is ahola ba let's look at those names in the hebrew so uh, uh, Ahola, which is H, Hebrew word H170, the Strong's is the first form, the first form is in form of feminine of H168, but is in fact for the second form from H168, her tent, that is idolatrous sanctuary. Aloha, uh, or, or Ohala, a symbolic name of Samaria. You want me to read the, well, the brown says the same thing, her mm -hmm. own tent. Right. It's uh, a Holaba, woman of the tent, or the tent is in her. Mm -hmm. And it's metaphorically speaking of Jerusalem as the adulterous wife of Yahuwah, or Yah. That's a whole about. Let's go to. Um, no, that was a whole lot that I just read. Okay, then, yeah. Okay, you read uh, a whole lot. A whole lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, her, her own tent. Okay. A whole about is H172. Okay, I want you to see the similarities of the both. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Read, um, because I read a whole about you read a whole lot, right? Yeah, I just finished reading a whole lot, so pretty much it's the same. But women, women, uh, woman of the tent, and then a whole, um, uh, a whole lot is okay, her woman, own tent, woman of the tent, or the tent is in her. Mm -hmm. Then, metaphorically, go ahead, and then a whole lot is her own tent. Or Samaria as the adulteress with Assyria, metaphorically speaking. Um, but also in the Strong's, it says her tent, that is idol um, idolatrous sanctuary. Right, so you see both of them point to uh, what? Whoredom and idolatry. So these two daughters that are being spoken of by the prophet uh, Ezekiel, according to the words of the Most High. One is speaking of Samaria, who is also what? Northern Kingdom. And the other is speaking of Jerusalem, who is what? Southern Kingdom. 
Okay, let's go. I think you stopped at verse 4, right? Um, but just start at verse 4. Just start at verse 4? Okay, because I read verse 4. Uh, Ezekiel 23 and 4. And the names of them were uh, um, Ahola the elder and Aholaba her sister. And they were mine, and they bear sons and daughters. Thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola, and, Je and Jerusalem oh, is... What, what verse you on? Four. Oh, okay, you see, okay, go yeah. ahead. I'm and sorry. Jerusalem is Aholaba. Verse 5. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine. And she dotted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. Okay, she what? She lusted for her lovers, the neighboring Assyrians. That's very important. Go ahead. Verse 6. Which were clothed with blue, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all of them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all of on whom she died. With all their idols, she defiled herself. Neither, le neither left her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity, and poured their whoredom upon her. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she dotted. These discovered her these discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women, for they had um, executed judgment upon her. Verse 11. And when, she, and when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt in her um, inordinate or, love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredom. She dotted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed, clothed most uh, gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way, and that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the uh, Chaldeans, Portrayed, portrayed with ver, uh, verlamin, girded with uh, girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look up to look to after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, Chaldea the land of their na uh, nativity. Uh, nativity. nativity, and as she saw with uh, saw them with her eyes. She dotted upon them and sent messengers unto them in into Chaldee. Well, she lusted upon them. Verse the King seven. Read just a little different. Yeah, the King James reads a different. Um, is um, Ezekiel twenty three and seventeen, and the Babylonians came to her into the into the bed of uh, of 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 love, and they defiled uh, defiled her with with their whoredom. And she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was um, alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she dotted upon the... Uh, the parameters whose flesh is uh, is as the flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus thou callest to remembrance the, uh, the lewdness of, the, of thy youth in bruising thy tents or the teats by the Egyptians for the, the paps of thy, of thy youth. Therefore, O Ahola, Aholaba, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, from whom thy, uh, thy mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side. The Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, uh, Pedoc 
and Sho and Ko and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desired, uh, desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding uh, upon horses. And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, and wheels, and with all the assemb assembly of people, which shall s set against the, um, the bloker and shield and helmet round, uh, round about, and I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to thee judgments. And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal fear of fiercely um, with thee, they shall take away thy nose and thy ears, and thy raiment shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and they and they shall and they, and they um, residue shall be devoured by the fire uh, by the fire by the fire. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Thus will I make thy lewdness to call uh, to, to cease from thee, and thy whoredom um, brought from the land of Egypt, so that thou shalt not lift up thy eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt any more. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, in the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all the all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their idols. Thou hast walked in the ways of thy sister, therefore I will give her cup into thy hand. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and, and had, and had in, 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 in derision. It, it containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of ex, um, astonishment and dissolution, with the, cup, with the cup of thy sister Samaria. So we can stop right there. But what we have here, we just read in Ezekiel, Ezekiel is saying pretty much the same thing that the prophet Hosea said, dealing with these two houses or these two sisters. Israel had just really gone off on the path of wickedness with her whoredoms and idolatry. The house of Judah witnesses this, witnesses how the Most High handles the house of Israel for that madness and does the same thing. So now when we get to verse 18, it says, she revealed her holotry and uncovered her nakedness. Then he said, then I alienated myself from her as I had alienated myself from her sister. He had to alienate himself from Judah just like he did with the house of Israel. But what we read is he never writes the house of Judah a bill of divorce as he did the house of Israel. So it said because the house of Judah followed in the house of Judah follow in the um, in Israel's footsteps, it said Yahuwah, a God, eventually gave Judah into captivity also. In 586 BCE, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem, burned Solomon's temple, and took the majority of the Jews to Babylon. And so, however, about 50 years later, when Medo-Persia defeated the Babylonians, many of the Jews were allowed to begin returning to Jerusalem starting around 536 BCE. And so this return was uh, in fulfillment of God or Yahuwah's promise to not utterly cast away the house of Judah, which we read about in uh, Hosea 1 and 7. And so even though their sins became worse than those of the house of Israel, 
which we see in Ezekiel 23 and 11, is that unlike Judah, the house of Israel never returned to their homeland. That's very important. Unlike Judah, the house of Israel never returned to their homeland. And so although Yahuwah punished both houses, the Jews have always been recognized as his people for one reason. Unlike the assimilated, you often heard me use that word a whole lot, assimilation. Unlike the assimilated house of Israel, the tribe or the house of Judah have always tried to keep the sign that he would never forever I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm reading too fast. They have tried to keep the sign that he said would forever identify the children of Israel. And we can go read about this sign in Exodus 31, verses 16 and 17. Let's see what this sign is and how important it is. You said Exodus 31 and 16? Yes, Exodus 31, 16 and verse 17. Okay. Exodus or Shemot 31 and 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep this, the Shabbat or the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Very important. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rests arrested and was refreshed. The Sabbath is the sign between the Most High and His people, the children of Israel. Okay. It says, the reunion of the house of Israel and the house of Judah are frequently mentioned in the Tanakh. And we say Tanakh. The Tanakh is what we would call an acronym you will see the word TNK. The T stands for the Torah, or Torah. The K stands for the Ketubim, which is called the writing, where we get the word Ketuba. I'm sorry, I just skipped one. The N stands for the Nabim, which is the prophet, prophets, and the K stands for the Ketra beam or the writings. And what we mean, mean, what we mean about writings is like this Solomon, Song of Solomon, Lamentations, um, Proverbs, these are called the writings. And we know the Nabim or the prophets. We have major prophets and we have what are called minor prophets. And like we said, the Torah is the first five books that were written by Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And yes, I did say they were written by Moses. The words were spoken to him and he wrote. Okay. Um, so we have the Tanakh, T-N-K. It's a, the reunion of the house of Israel and the house of Judah are frequently mentioned in the Tanakh. Some, including many Messianic Jews, tried to make the case that the northern tribes were reconciled to the house of Judah before the Babylonian captivity. It says, let's look at a few passages used by those who hold this opinion to see if they do in fact show that the two houses uh, have already been reunited. The first passage will examine, we will examine it from 2 Chronicles, the 11th chapter Starting at verse 16. Okay. Second Chronicles eleven and sixteen. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as their uh, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. Continue. 
And that's Second Chronicle eleven and sixteen. Yeah. Oh, okay, then let me do a line check. Yeah, keep reading. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. And David longed and, 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 and said, On that one would give me drink of water of the well of Bethlehem that is that is at the gate. And the three brake through the, the, the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well. Okay, out of, read 16. Start at 16 again. Read 16 and 17. 16 and 17? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Whoops. I went to... First Chronicles, my bad. Because I was looking, because I thought I had the wrong verse. Uh, 11, and 11 and 6, you said 11 and 16? Mm-hmm. Okay, 2 okay, Chronicles 11 and 16. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came to Jerusalem and to, to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. Verse 17. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of, of, Sol, uh, the son of Solomon, strong. Three, uh, three years, for three years they walked in the ways of David and Solomon. So the emphasis should be on for how long did they walk? Three years. Three years. Okay, then let's go to the 15th chapter of 2 Chronicles, starting at the 8th verse. Second Chronicles 15 and 8. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols of all the land of, Ju uh, of Judah and Benjamin and out of and, and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and, re uh, and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the the, uh, the porch of the Lord continue mm -hmm. and he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and sh and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Sim uh, Simeon for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance, when they saw that the Lord, uh, the Lord his God, was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. Mm -hmm. So what we see here, we see the coming together of northern southern kingdom, but you only have what? Right. Remnant or three other tribes of northern kingdom, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon. That's who went and joined with Judah and Benjamin. So you do not have what the reunification of northern and southern kingdom as a whole. The reunion has to take place and um, consist of Judah, Benjamin, and all ten tribes of the northern kingdom. So it says, no reunion of all 12 tribes are described here. Only the tribes of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon are mentioned as having joined Judah to worship God or Yahuwah, our Elohim, properly. It said, it makes sense that some of the tribes would join with King Asa of Judah. Their tribal territories border on the parcel of land belonging to Judah and Benjamin. And so in reality, there is no evidence in scripture or history that Judah and Israel were re reunited during this time period. Some use the book of Ezra, who wrote about the return to Judah from the Babylonian captivity, to make the case that what all 12 tribes return. They gener generally cite the following verses as proof. Ezra 2 and 70. Let's read it. Because I, I've dealt with a lot of Israelites concerning this verse. Or the book of Ezra's. Go ahead. Ezra's 2 
of the second chapter, the 70th, 70th verse. Ezra 2 and 70. Trying to look for Ezra. Oh, the 70th is. verse. Man, I've had two questions. I was like looking for it. I was like, where is that? Doing? Okay. 70th verse? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the priests, uh, Ezra's 2 and 70. So the priests and the Levites and some of the people and the singers and the porters and the uh, Nephilims dwelt in their cities and all Israel in their cities. Mm -hmm. The singers, the gatekeepers, and the net names dwelt in their cities and all Israel in their cities. It's, the scripture does say that all Israel dwelt in their cities. Is Ezra speaking about all 12 tribes of Israel? He said those who seek to prove a reunion of Israel and Judah argue that to be the, to be the case. That's what they argue. However, could Ezra just be speaking of all Israel that he had taken captive, uh, that had been taken captive by the Babylonians, those from Judah, Benjamin, and Levi? Let's allow Ezra to answer this question at the beginning of the fourth chapter. Ezra 4 and 1, we're going to read that. Okay. Ezra 4 and 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple onto the Lord God of Israel. And so Ezra clearly tells us that only Judah and Benjamin, along with the Levite and the priests that were present in Judea when the rebuilding of the temple took place. Again, it is evident that the reuniting of Judah and Ephraim had not taken place by that time. The, uh, by the time the Jews came back to Judea in Jerusalem after 70 years of Babylonian captivity. And so when examined objectively, there is no scriptorial basis for assuming that the two houses were reunited before Babylonian captivity. It said when Yahuwah God divorced the house of Israel and cast them away in 722 B.C., all the children afterward born in the ten tribes became spiritually illegitimate. The Torah states that illegitimate children are banned from being part of the assembly of the Most High for a period of 10 generations. Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter and the second verse. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. A bastard shall now not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation, shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. It's a ten generation. Let's define what a generation is according to the scripture in the Bible. Let's go to Psalms 90, verse 10. Okay. Psalms of Tahalim 90 and 10. The days of our years are three score years and ten. If and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So three score years and ten. That's seventy years. Okay. Let's go and read something. It's okay. It says, in the Bible, a generation is defined as being 70 years. A small number from the northern kingdom were likely assimilated into the house of Judah before and after, I mean, I'm sorry, before and during the conquest of Samaria. But according to the Torah, no descendant of the northern kingdom of Samaria afterward would have been eligible to be a part of Yahuwah's people for at least 70, 700 years after God had divorced their mother, the house of Israel, Jeremiah 3 and 8, which we read about earlier. It said, yet the scriptures show that Yahuwah does plan on bringing these wayward offspring back into the fold. Key, the Most High plans to bring the house of Israel back into the fold. And we're going to cover that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's that the prophet Ezekiel, one of the 
Jews taken into captivity, I mean, taken captive by Babylon, Babylon before the destruction of Ju Judah, wrote vividly about the eventual reconciliation of northern and southern kingdom. We're going to read here. We've covered it in a previous um, um, teaching, but we're going to read it again, and let's see what happens with um, southern and northern kingdom. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Okay. Ezekiel, or Kizikayo, 37 and 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write, write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into, into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. And when, the and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, will, will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy, in thy hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be uh, gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Continue. Mm -hmm. and, I will, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all, neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with the despicable, uh, despicable, uh, despicable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they all shall be one, and they shall all and, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall all also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your father have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yet I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, I and that, that I the Lord do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So what we see is the reunification being prophesied by the prophet Ezekiel while he was in Babylonian captivity. And you see that the Most High promised to reunite and bring the two sticks back together and make them one nation again. So they will be no longer divided and be two kingdoms and two nations. And what we also see should see is that there has been a lot of emphasis on the house of Israel and we set out to show that history proves and show historical events that took, took place, historical events that took place, and show how the house of Israel or Ephraim, the northern kingdom, became Gentiles. Just like it was prophesied in Genesis, the 48th chapter, the 19th verse, which we covered in not the previous lesson, but the lesson before then, which should have been part B. 
we went over the prophecy of Jacob uh, prophesying to his two grandsons, um, Ephraim and Manasseh, and he talked about how Ephraim would become the fullness of the Gentiles in that 19th verse. So what we want to do now is go over to Romans, the second, I mean, the seventh chapter. Romans, the seventh chapter. And we're going to begin to look at some things. And see what happens with um, the children of Israel. You want to start from the very first verse? Well, the house of Israel. Um, yes, Romans 7, starting at verse 1. Okay. Romans 7 and 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a, uh, an husband is bound by the law to her husband so, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosened from the law of her husband. So then, it, so then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, thou though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are becoming dead to the law by the body of Mashiach or Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Elohim or God. Stop right there. So we see in Romans 7, Apostle Shaul or Paul, whose name was Saul, but in Hebrew is pronounced Shaul. Um, he's speaking to Northern Kingdom or quote unquote, these who the uh, Christian church called the church at Rome. But the church at Rome were Israelites. And this is why it is speaking about the law of the husband. Paul says, speaking to them that know the law. And in Hebraic law, when a man or a husband takes his wife, writes a bill of divorce, and places it in her hand, and sends her out of his house, that woman is still bound to that husband that wrote her or gave her the bill of divorce by way of the law of the husband, which states that even though I put you away and I sent you out of my house, you are yet my possession. You are not free to marry any man. This is according to Hebraic law. The only way that woman is permitted to marry again is that the husband who put her away and gave her that bill of divorce and sent her out of his house, he has to die. Once he dies, that woman is free to marry again. So when we read in Jeremiah, remember I told y'all to what? Keep in mind, pay very close to attention, Jeremiah the third chapter and the eighth verse. How the Most High did what? He put the house of Israel away and wrote her and gave her a bill of divorce. Did we not just read in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, about the two sticks coming back together again? The only way the two sticks can come back together again, because the only reason they're coming back together again is because the marriage supper takes place with the whole house of Jacob, all 12 tribes. But Northern Kingdom, who was written a bill of divorce by her husband, the only way she can enter back into covenant, which we started off in the very first lesson, talking about the Abrahamic covenant. This is why I said all of these lessons go together. That covenant was a marriage covenant. And once it was broken, and once the house of Israel was written a bill of divorce, the house of Israel, Ephraim, the northern kingdom of the ten tribes, Samaria, 
once they were written a bill of divorce, the only way she can return back into covenant to be with Judah as one is that the husband that wrote her the bill of divorce, he has to die. So let's go back and read that last two verses again. Okay. And Romans 7. Okay. Uh, you want me to start from verse 2? Which verse did you start at? Verse 4. Yeah, start at verse 3. Do 3 and 4. 3 and 4? Okay. So then, uh, Romans 7 and 3. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man. If while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she, she become, what, go ahead. She shall be called an adulteress. She shall be called an adulteress. Go ahead. But if her husband be dead. If her husband be dead. She is free from that law. She's free from the law of the husband or that law. Now listen very closely to what it says. So she is not no adulteress, though she be married to another man. She's not an adulteress, though she be married to another man, because what? What? The husband that wrote her to the bill of divorce and sent her away, he has died. Verse 4 is the game changer. Verse 4 is the game changer. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Romans 7 and 4. Wherefore, my brethren. Wherefore, my brethren. His brother will be who? Israelites. Ye also are become dead to the law. House of Israel, northern kingdom. Because remember, Apostle Paul is a what? A Jew from the tribe of Benjamin. He says he's a Hebrew, a Hebrew from what? The tribe of Benjamin. That's why he said, therefore, what, my brethren? Ye what? Also are become dead to the law. You have become dead to that law. That law has no more effect on you. Now, not only are you free to marry again, but watch this. By the blood, uh, by the body of Christ or Mashiach. By the body of Hamashiach or Jesus, that some of you call him. We that, call him Yahusha. Go ahead. That ye shall be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead. You can marry now. And not only can you marry again, but you can what? Marry him who was raised from the dead. Who was raised from the dead? Hamashiach Yahushua. Hamashiach Yahushua, who the word commonly called Jesus. Jesus Christ. This is the only way the house of Israel or the northern kingdom or these um, New Testament Gentiles, because remember, we're reading in Romans. He was not married to anybody. Who did he marry at Sinai? Who did he divorce? That's why Paul is saying, my brethren, you're dead. That, you're no longer bound to that law. You're dead to that law. Now you can marry again. Not only can you marry again, but you can return back under the covenant and be with Hamashiach, Yahusha, or Jesus if you want to. And I'm using these terms like Jesus and God because a lot of you are new and you might not be familiar with the Hebrew terminology of uh, the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit, um, Hamashiach, Yahusha, which is the anointed one, Yahusha, which is the Son, or you might not be familiar with uh, Yahuwah Elohim, which is um, some, what Psalms um, 96 and 4, I believe it is. Not one, I forgot the verse. Uh, that they call Yah, or what they call Yahweh. I know you know about it. What is it? <laughs> uh, let me look for it. I think it's Psalms. It I might be 98 and 4 or Psalms. No, it's not the 90. I think it's the 68 and 4. 60. Psalms 68 and 4. 68 and 4. Yeah, 68 and 4. Uh, real quick, Psalms of Tahalim, 68 and 4. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, exalt him that rideth uh, upon the heavens by his name. It'll say Jah with the J, but there's no J, so it's Yah, and rejoice before him. Hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. Now let's go over and read, let's go to 1 Peter 1 and 1. Let's see what First Peter, um, so remember we're in the New Testament now, and we're trying to show you that all of these people that you guys are looking at as Gentiles, they are Gentiles, <clears throat> but they are Israelites by blood. They're only Gentiles because they have spent so many centuries and uh, years assimilated into these other cultures. Let's go see who First Peter 1 and 1 is talking about. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, or Hamashiach Yahusha, 
to the strangers scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, uh, Cappadocia Asia, and Bith uh, Bithynia. So we see here, Peter's letter is what? Addressed to who? The scattered. The scattered or the, the dispersed. Yeah. The strangers scattered abroad. Remember what was going to happen to the house of Israel? You remember that son in Hosea had? What go by the very first child, which was the son Jezreel? Remember, they would be scattered abroad. But the New Testament is all about them going fishing and fishing them back in and gathering and bringing them back to the fold. Let's go to 1 Peter 2. Yeah, can I, uh, can we look at a couple things? Here? Yeah. Okay, so when you look into the Greek too, that's why you have to really look into these words uh, that you see. When you look at that Greek, which is G1290, the, the word that's, uh, that's for throughout, um, you're going to get the Greek word um, diaspora. Mm -hmm. And if you if you look in your thyers, which is 1290. Um, and your thyers are thyers Greek lexicon. lexicon. So when we say thyers or thyers, it's your Greek lexicon. And when you hear us say uh, BDB or Brown Driver's Bridge, that's the Hebrew uh, concord, the Brown Driver's Bridge that it goes a little deeper and a more, it's more scholarly than your Strong's um, concordance. Right. Uh, your first definition is a scattering, a disparation, and then A, uh, which is 1A, which is right under it, of Israelites dispersed among, among foreign nations. Israel dispersed amongst foreign nations. Mm -hmm. And then 1B, of the Christians scattered abroad among the Gentiles, but there's a little deeper study. Yeah, so when it says as Christians scattered amongst the Gentiles, you know it would be talking about Christians because uh, Rome gave you Christianity. Right. It's talking about Israel because remember, the, what does the Bible say? It said, and they were first called Christians at Antioch. It was the Jews or Israelites who outsiders were, were calling them Christians. And they were first, they were first called that in Antioch. Not so much what we call Christians or the Christian church, because at that time there was no such thing as a Christian church during the time of Hamashiach and the disciples. Mm -hmm. That madness has not had not begun yet. And then also, if you read it in the Strong's, and I'm gonna go to another one. It's because it comes from G twelve eighty nine. And it's it, it, uh, the definition will give you dispersion that is specifically in constant concentrate uh, tr uh, concentrately and the converted Israelite residents in Gentile countries. Read that again. <laughs> Israelite. Pay very close attention to Actually, what you're no, saying. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, say it all over again. And it's, make sure you read it with clarity and understanding. Okay. Comes from G. 1289. G, G 1289, your Greek in your concordance, your Greek 1289 or G 1289. This uh, desperation, that is specifically and concretely the converted Israelites residents. The converted Israelites. Resident in Gentile countries. Resident who had taken up resident who was scattered or uh, or dispersed into what? Gentile countries. Gentile countries. And in parentheses, which are scattered and then in other parentheses, abroad. Which are scattered abroad. And then when you look into the word G1289, you're going to get the Greek word uh, diasporo, or dis, if I'm saying that right, diasporo. Uh, diasporo, uh, uh, diaspora. Diaspora, that's what mm -hmm. you get that. Which means, it's, the root of it is what? Mm -hmm. To disperse or to throw a soul a scatter. See, that's exactly what I was going to read because when you look into the Strong's and the Greek Strong's, it actually comes from the words 1223, G4687. And then the definitions is to sow throughout. That is 
figuratively distribute in foreign lands scattered abroad. And, you know, the only message I have, if I may, Maury, um, is you have to really look at these Greek words and really you should be looking at all the words and mm -hmm. your concordances and do the best and the deep research so you can get an understanding of who the audience is mm -hmm. and who are these disciples because Hamashiach and Mori will get into those teachings later on of these disciples had were commissioned to go into these areas for a specific reason. Really? And you also should see a pattern of um, Officer Abadia, who and myself, you see how we often go back to these words and give you the Greek understanding and the Hebrew understanding. Because remember, this was not written into English for our people. So they didn't speak the English language, and the English is a young, bastardized language. And it cannot properly convey the message that's trying to be or need to be conveyed when reading the scriptures. Because the scriptures were written in an ancient language and a language that was not spoken by our people at the time. It was not written in English. So we have to take you back to the closest language that was near and dear to them at that time, which would have been Greek and then going back to the Hebrew. So, a lot of people, this is hard for them to swallow, and it's hard for them to accept. But we're not making this stuff up. We're not trying to be mean or biased or prejudiced when we say that the book was written to, for, and about the children of Israel. That's why we always make it our business to send shalom to the children of Israel as well as the um, strangers that let hope to the children of Israel. So, without any further ado, can, we... Can, uh, can I add one more thing, if you don't mind? Um, yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to read uh, 1 Peter 1 and 2, because it kind of is kind of concreting this, and I know this is going to be something a little bit more deeper um, that we'll go into, is... Uh, the verse it says, it's 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, or Hamashiach Yahusha, grace unto you in peace and be multiplied. Now, if you look into the word elect, the Greek would give you, it's, it's Greek word 1588. And it's uh, ekalatos, and um, if you look at it, it's called picked out, chosen, chosen by God to obtain salvation through Christ or Hamashiach. Um, and then that actually comes from the word 1586 in your Greek also. And the reason I'm bringing this out because it, it, it's kind of painting the picture a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. Because if you look in, in the in the th on the thyers, it says to pick out chosen, to pick out chosen out from oneself, choosing out of many, um, and it says, i.e., Jesus choosing his disciples, choosing one from an office, um, and then if you skip down to definition, um. 1C1, i.e. the Israelites. Mm -hmm. The Israelites. So. so that's why it's important to look at these words and take your time to really study. And we're going to continue to focus on these things. And, uh, and you're going to see without a shadow of a doubt that these New Testament Gentiles, and I hope you're seeing it already, they were the house of Israel who had been scattered and so on, and they assimilated into the heathen nations around them and absorbed their culture, their heritage, and things. So with that being said, we're going to close out this teaching, and I'm going to say shalom, shalom to Israel and the strangers at Let's Hope, and we will see you guys uh, at the next teaching or lesson. So at this time, Abba Yahoo.
Officer Abaya, who y'all saw, is going to pray us out. Hallelujah. Abba Father, thank you once again for allowing us to come together. Father Yah, we just want to give you praise and esteem. We want to thank you for everything. We want to thank you for your word, for your instructions, for your Torah, just for the way of life. We want to thank you for the ultimate love gift of Hamashiach Yahusha. And we want to thank you just as we get closer and closer to uh, for another set of our day in your Shabbat, Father. We look forward to your rest. We thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for the provisions. And we just thank you for uh, the, the Melchizedek Coven that you've, placed, uh, that you've given us to uh, your children. And Father Yah, we thank you. We say these things and ask these things through. Hamashiach Yahusha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, fam. Shalom, shalom, fam. Love you guys.